Hello there, YouTube. Welcome to Sketchbook Habit Day 8. Today we are testing out the dried paints from yesterday's art session. Thank you so much for requesting this video. It, it helps me a great deal. So yes, the paints, uh, they are not completely dried yet, which is actually a great thing. Um, they're still a little bit moist. They're a little bit squishy. Uh, a quick little refresher. These are the uh, Paul Rubin student grade paints. They were about 97 or 89 cents per tube. And here is my artist grade Paul Rubin's custom palette along with the uh, the mini glittery shimmery special set just so we can kind of see how all these paints look in their pans. Uh, to me, they all look brilliant and glossy, so I'm pretty happy. Okay, for the moment of truth, how do these paints reactivate after 24 hours? Ta-da! I am pretty happy. I think they look just as vibrant as um, when we freshly poured out these paints. Granted, uh, they are not completely dry solid yet, but for next day paints, I'm, I'm pretty content. While I am swatching all of these colors out again, I wanted to double confirm the color payoff of the Conacodome Rose because in yesterday's video, I mentioned how it just lacked the vibrancy in comparison to the professional line. So um, I made sure to really work the paint this time, uh, giving it like an extra generous swatch. And yes, I was able to achieve a darker value, um, but it doesn't have the same hue and saturation vibrancy as the um, professional line Rose Red using the same pigment PV19. Let's have a side-by-side -side comparison so we can illustrate this a little bit better. On the left is the student grade, on the right is the professional, and um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, super time-lapse dry shift of these paints. I am able to get a really nice dark mass tone with both paints, but the professional line is a little bit brighter. It kind of leans a little bit more red, corally in comparison to the student grade. Um, I prefer the a professional grade more. And since I love you guys so much, I wanted to take this moment and share a few more PV19s in my personal collection uh, to demonstrate that this pigment PV19 does come in various shades of like pinks, reds, and purples. So I hope this helps you to uh, shop smart. Starting with the affordable Turner's 15 milliliter tubes at uh, $5.59, this is uh, rose red. Um, to be honest, this isn't my favorite variation. Um, maybe my tube is a little bit faulty. Uh, there was way too much gum arabic making it a gloopy, gloppy mess. Then we have the Daniel Smith in Conacodome Rose and Conacodome Red, which is below it. Uh, both of these tubes are $7.16 uh, for like a 5 milliliter tube. So it's kind of interesting to see how these all behave. Um, to be honest, I really love how the Daniel Smith flows. I just think it's elegant and just stunning. Moving along, so the remaining paint swatches were awesome, zero complaints here. Um, I did work the paint globs to be a very thick mixture just to see how far I could push it, and I'm pretty happy with consistency with yesterday's paint swatches, so yay! Alrighty, one more paint test. Um, this is mainly for myself. Um, I really love reactivating dried paint mixtures on my mixing tray. I'm kind of a lazy artist and um, <laughs> sometimes I'll see a color on my tray and I'm like, oh, let's use that. Uh, but any hoozles, it's really important to me that it reactivates smoothly and that it's not chalky or gritty or like it separates. So this, this passes with flying colors. I'm very pleased uh, because there are a ton of different pigments going on in there, especially with some granulating colors. I think it reactivated quite nicely. Demo art time! I am treating myself to some patron portraits because I'm trying to take it easy today. So this is my patron, Nana. I hope I said your name right. Please do correct me if I didn't. Uh, by the way, thank you so much for submitting your photos for me to practice with. Like I, oh my gosh, when I saw your photos, I'm like, I'm in for a real treat and I did. I had a blast drawing you. I hope you're cool with me drawing you again in the future. Um, oh yeah, so how patron portraits work, it's 
really random. Um, I have a Discord server that is exclusive for my patrons, and there is this like little channel where my patrons can submit photos for me to draw from. Uh, the reason to do this is one, they give me permission. Two, it's I know that it's an actual photo of them, and I'm have permission to use it for videos, for sketchbook PDFs, all that kind of goodies. But yes, um, I really like this channel because it serves as a reliable place for me to access photos that I can grab at any time to do a quick little portrait study. I do want to put a disclaimer out there that submitting your photo does not guarantee you a portrait um, because the way that I do these, sometimes I will pull multiple photos at a time and then other times I won't be able to access that channel for months depending on how busy I am. So. Uh, I just want to put that out there. I really do look forward to accessing this channel because it's such a nice break from using myself as reference. Like it's so refreshing just to see different facial structures and I got beyond spoiled today with this batch of photos. She provided so many different angles with great lighting situations where I was able to see the structure of the face. So thank you so much, Nana, for enabling me to have an easier and successful portrait practice. Like, you made my sketchbook session so valuable today. Like, thank you! After the first drawing was complete, I was just itching to draw more and uh, <laughs> I was so bad. I had this moment of like, you know Tori, you could stop and you could actually finish work on time today <laughs> and actually have the evening to relax, but no, I just wanted to paint more and um, yeah, I got carried away. So for this uh, second round, I wanted to use my Daniel Smith uh, M. Graham, my main palette. It's like a custom palette that I chose like my favorite pigments. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is I still don't know how I feel about the Paul Rubin student grade. Like, I want to be rooting for it. I want to say I love it because it's such a great deal for 97 cents per tube. Wait, 89 cents. I don't know <laughs> where does 97 cents come from. Okay, let's just say a dollar, um, but any hoozles, I was hoping by using my higher end paints, I would have more clarity, but my experience today with drawing a successful portrait just really did blur my perception of both paints. Well, I'm going to be completely honest, I'm totally biased towards my Daniel Smith. Yes, I felt like they were just creamier, I felt like I was able to mix richer uh, mixtures and that it was less fussy to layer with where the Paul Rubens it kind of got a little bit chalky where it would kind of like dissolve the layers underneath but it was still pretty good for a student grade paint like for example I thought my first wash was great I enjoyed the soft muted colors that framed the figure like I thought the hair on her left side, well, her right side of the face and then on her shirt and on her hat was just like a great contrast and to be able to get those really subtle hue shifts, that was really enjoyable. And for the second study, I treated it like a speed painting because I was running out of time, but it was phenomenal. I had such a great time. Um, I was just like rapid mixing all my colors. I was like slapping it on the paper and I was just relying on my gut instinct just 
really observing what I saw and just trying to convey that on my paper. Like it was so like bam, 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 so many decisions, little like hesitation. I just, I had a wonderful time just chiseling, chiseling away with a flat brush, working wet into wet. Is it obvious? I'm just so happy. <laughs> oh yeah. So I'm sorry, dear friends, I haven't reached a conclusion yet about the Paul Rubin student grades. I don't want to be reckless and say that these are a holy grail. Everyone should run out and buy them. Um, I, I think I need more time. So maybe uh, in the future I can do more patron portraits uh, experimenting with the Paul Rubens, maybe on a different paper. Oh yeah, how about this? Let me know what kind of paper you like to use and I will use the Paul Rubin student grade um, paints on that because I do find that the sketchbook I'm using right now, the 100% cotton, is just making everything look great so I don't want to mislead anyone. Alrighty, so time for me to peel on out. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you had fun, please give this video the thumbs up and subscribe and if you're drawing with me, let me know in the comments down below so I can give you a high five. It's already day eight. We're making so much progress. Like we're almost through this week and I'm kind of blown away about how fast this is all going. Like the first week diving into this project, I remember just struggling energy wise just to keep up in both art and video production. But this week, I am I think I'm getting the swing of things, crossing fingers. Okie dokie, keep on drawing, I will see you tomorrow, have an excellent day, see you later, bye! So I 